Welcome back to The Breakfast. Our first um, major conversation this morning, we're talking about 83 vehicles that have been auctioned off by the Lagos State Government for traffic violations. Um, and of course, uh, we've invited this morning Mr. Lekon Shote, uh, who's a public affairs analyst, to join us and share his thoughts on this you know, pretty big issue. Good morning, Mr. Shote. Good morning. How are you today? Oh, good. Fantastic. Thank How are you? you? Yeah. Good morning. All right, you're welcome. Um, all right, so let, let's get into you know this uh, discussion this morning. Some people would you know argue that um, you know it might be a little unfair to auction off vehicles uh, that were impounded or seized for breaking traffic violations, regard regardless of how minor they are. Do you agree, you know, with that narrative? Well, to, to start with. The law, we, are, we always talk about rule of law, which means that once we agree on laws, you know, within our society, they have to be obeyed. Don't forget Section 14 of the Nigeria's Constitution says security is job, is job number one of any government whether federal or state or local government. Okay? So when people, they live, I mean, anybody who drives against traffic, one-way traffic, for example, or drives on the BRT lane, for example, you and I know that that person is deliberately flouting the rules. And it results in traffic jams, hold-ups, and it affects the economy of the society. People who want to go for meetings cannot go for their meeting on time or even miss the meeting altogether just because somebody decided to be wrong-headed. As far as I'm concerned, if uh, somebody, we have rules that should get our society to advance, you know, and then some people decide to flood. They, they, they should pay the price. You throw the book at them. That's my first reaction to, to your question. Okay. I, I, I was, you know, wondering if you would agree that, yes, there are these laws and there are rules that have been, you know, set by the government to ensure that these violations, um, you, know, uh, you know, don't continue to happen. But would you agree that it, it might be a little harsh um, auctioning of their vehicles. You see, a, a law, you see, a drastic situation requires a drastic uh, law. As far as I'm concerned, see, when you make an example of one or two people, don't you? you I'm sure you remember when uh, Mr. Fashola was governor of Lagos State. Individual. Even military officers go and start driving on the, the, the BRT road lane. And that, and, that's, and that is unfair. It's not good. The governor, Governor Fashola, will have to stop them from driving on the, arrest them more or less for driving on the BRT lane, which is dedicated to BRT buses. You know, when we start talking about is something too heavy-handed and all that. The best way to do it, you tax people in their pockets, you know, because it doesn't look like prison system is, is working anymore. As a, as a matter of fact, there's a review of thinking about uh, prisons in the world. One, they now call them correctional institutions. That's number one. They believe that, that you are incarcerated is enough punishment that you don't necessarily have to do hard labor. Okay, if that is the theory, then anyone, you begin to tax them in their pockets. That is a bigger deterrent than just, you know, taking them to court. Or not. If they, I, I don't think it's too harsh. I really, if you ask me, you know, I don't think so. Okay, um, Mr. Shorten. 
Yes. I would like us to address this, you know, fundamental issue of violation of road traffic laws. Why do you think this persists, especially in a you know, very populated city as Lagos? You will see that there are various rules driving against traffic, driving without license and all that. And there are prescribed punishment, if you like, for each one of those. Maybe we can task the government to advertise these rules, let everybody be aware, even though it is argued that there is no ignorance, there is no excuse in law. You have to educate yourself about the laws of the society that you belong in. You know. So that, that my position, like I said, is that when they are this, 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 uh, what they are doing is disruptive of society. It inconveniences other people. I was coming out of the uh, University of Lagos yesterday, and we got to Tentagment. And people were driving in such a way that people parked in the middle of the road. They say they went to pick their children in school. And you park in the middle of the road. I think whatever anybody else had to do did not matter. I understand you want to go and pick your children. That is okay. I understand that. But you do not then have to constitute yourself into a nuisance to other road users. It is unfair. So if they task them, it tax them in their pocket because it appears jail is not helping anybody. And in any case, these days, with COVID-19, you don't want to go and start pushing people into prison and then they now contract uh, COVID-19. So, so I believe very strongly that okay. if they are able to, if you tax people in their pocket, they obey your laws better. I've lived in some countries where they tax you once you offend. They tax your pocket. They punish your pocket. Yeah, but That's isn't isn't it, a, Mr. Shota? Let me yeah. ask this: Isn't it a failure of um, our government to build those type of systems um, so that you know you either you know are taxed to pay a fine, or you you know maybe eventually when you fail to pay those fines, uh, you might of course be uh, you know invited to court, and if you don't do that, your vehicle can be impounded, and then later on, you know maybe if you still don't pay those fines, of course the fines continue to increase. Uh, as time passes, yeah, I, a I, lot later yes, you may also lose like your that. you may also lose your driver's license. Um, but yes. isn't it a failure yes. of our own government to create those systems that has made us, you know, to go straight from having a twenty thousand naira fine for breaking traffic okay. laws? I'm, I'm, to, I'm willing. To, I'm willing. To, I'm willing to buy your your argument that we should go incrementally. Yes, I have lived in a society in the past where you violate traffic laws they send you a bill, you know. You don't pay it, they increase it. You don't pay, they increase after two weeks, after one month. Eventually, they tell you you can't drive. Or even your vehicle cannot move. Yeah, so I agree with you. But if the point is that task, tax people in their pocket, that's, that's the point I, want, I really want to make. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Well. Shote, apart from tasking people in their pockets, like you've mentioned, apart from these fines, how else can we regulate transport behavior, road, road usage, such that we don't even have, you know, instances where people break traffic laws? Do we now start from, you know, these, the schools where people learn how to drive? How best does the government regulate tra tra uh, trans tra transport uh, uh, driving behaviors? Well, very well. First... Let the government, we need, you see, what got, yeah, the mistake that government is making in Lagos, they are rehabilitating old roads. They need to construct more roads in Lagos State. That's number one. They should, they should, Lagos is supposed to be a special area. The federal government should assist Lagos to complete the Lagos metro line. So that a lot of people do not have to use um, you know, the, the, the roads. That's number two. Number three, housing. You see, think about this. Just think about this. A lot of people work on the main, live on the mainland. They work, they, they work on the island. 
And when, when, so when, when they are going in the morning, there's a lot of traffic in one direction. And the opposite direction yeah, is almost vacant. And when people close in the evening and they are coming back to, the, to where they live, on that lane is a heavy traffic. Opposite is, is, is free. Why don't you build, for example, Lagos, Lagos Island used to be, if you like, uh, the hub of economy in Lagos State. Well, everybody has now, all the businesses, banks, they have moved to Lekki and Via area. How about building residential uh, accommodation on the Lagos Island? You know, nice, beautiful apartments where these people who work in Lekki, who work on the Lagos Island can live. Good environment, build it for them. So they are, they are living very close to their jobs. So they commute less. These are some of the things that some of us have said in the past. Housing is a major um, measure to help ease traffic. Then you go to places like the Yanopaja Ibeda area. How many factories do you have there? How many jobs do you have there? How many government establishments are there? So you need to push jobs around one, and then two, you need to, I mean, okay, for example, uh, at a point, it has improved now. At a point, you want to do COVID test. Everybody must come to the Yaba area. At the IBH, lose about three or four areas within the, within the Yaba area. People who live at Badagri, people who like, live at Efe, they will have, all have to travel to travel to, to Yaba to get their uh, COVID test. All right. Does um, it make sense? It does not have to be decentralized. Mr. Jota, I want you to, because of the time that we have um, um, left, I, I want you to quickly speak on, um, because I remember that a public hearing was held uh, before these laws were passed. Um, and of course, there was uh, decisions on um, placing a fine, a psychiatric test for drivers, um, mm. um, and of course, a vehicle being impounded um, eventually if um, the, the, the um, uh, perpetrator fails. Um, but I want you to speak on um, if you know you might think that we need to also, uh, you know, create better systems that can punish the pockets of offenders. Um, exactly. you know, and of course, help us, you know, to to prevent these things from continuous, you know, from repeating uh, themselves. Do you think that we maybe should continue to work on ways with which we can, um, you know, smoothing out the systems that operate in Nigeria, um, so that pockets can be punished immediately? These offences are, are, you know, committed. Ah, uh, see, listen. You remember when the FRC, Federal Road Safety Commission, was initially established? If they pick you up, say, on the Lagos and the Express Road for violating the law, they ask you to go and pay a fine in Abuja. Maybe they ask you to go and pay 500 naira to the, uh, to the FRC account. You will drive all the way. You will spend more money than that 500 naira fine to get to Abuja. You will miss your job. You will miss your business the inconveniences and all that. By the time they put you through, just to go and pay in Abuja, somebody offends, commits, commits offense in Lagos State, you ask him to go and pay in Enugu State. They, they know that it is not just the fine, but the inconvenience. That will teach you not to repeat that offense in the future. So there has to be ways, you know, it's not, you don't, you don't have to be throwing people in jail or anything. But when you, again, like I repeat, if you tax them in their pocket, you make it inconvenient for them to walk. Next time, they will be more careful. Because these people do this in the different. How would you see BRT lane, for example, which is dedicated to BRT buses to, to ease um, um, the traffic situation in Lagos? And then you decide to go and, to go and drive there. Or you deliberately go and drive against traffic. I mean, it's not as if they don't know what they are doing. You see, it's a one way lane, and then you drive into it. So something must happen. Mm -hmm. I don't really believe that you should be jailing people so much. By the time you tax their pocket, you'll be more careful. 
You That's make it right. inconvenient for them. Yeah, but See, the, 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 it's not, we, 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 all, we blame government, blame government, blame government. But we ourselves, we are not prepared. See, we are, uh, people go to parties now to spread, super spreader events. Is that the fault of government? Mm. No. Absolutely not. Uh, you know, it's, it's not, I, I, let's also quickly state that it's not um, like we don't have, um, you know, laws that tax or punish the pockets of offenders. You know, auctioning the vehicle is the last option of the, you know, that the government has taken when you fail to pay those fines and yes. you fail to maybe go for the psychiatric I, I agree test. with you. I, I, yes. I, I, so, that. So, I, I, I agree with you. I say that, yes, it may not be the last option. Okay. But by the time you go through the walks, yes. and then, everybody, then you exhaust everything, then at the last moment, your vehicle should be fine. Listen, F finally, in a country where I've worked before, where I've mm -hmm. been before, when they pick your vehicle and take it to their, to their um, the facility, apart from paying the fine, the man who towed the truck that towed your vehicle from the spot where you offended to the facility, you will pay him. You know, the even you know, legal state, for example, will now say, go and look, they, before they release your they ask for your tax and Those inconveniences, they can, ex, you know, uh, uh, exploit, exploit those options. Okay. And then finally, when you become a, a perennial offender, then of course they can pick your car. Mr. Chate, I, I, would like to, I, I would like to right. ask you, sorry for interjecting, about this auction of these 83 vehicles. Lots of people are concerned about transparency, you know, in the processes of this auction. Do you think people should actually be concerned, you know, about this? You mean transparency? In the auction. Well, I have not been to the auction, but I do know that... Uh, in most cases, the people who own the vehicle also go there to try and see if they can get the vehicle. I have, I've even heard that when they get there, they even appeal to other people. They say, please, this is my car. I want to buy it. Please, don't be, don't <laughs> outbid or overbid. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. But if you, if you, you, know, if you couldn't pay... If you couldn't pay a like 20,000 Naira fine, I'm not sure how you've been able to raise money to buy the car back. <laughs> you could have just paid the fine, you know, initially. Right. In the first, um, thank you. Absolutely. Hey, I, I, love, I love your logic. Yeah, it makes Le, sense. Le so so why, why, why do that in the first place? Yes. Um, I, I, or maybe it's the owners of the vehicles, not the drivers now Possibly. that come to buy them yes, back. But I, um, so. I, I want you to, you know, before we go, final um, thoughts um, from you. Uh, the enforcers of these traffic laws in Lagos, um, do you have any challenges with the way that they work? Um, or do you think that we also need to refine, you know, some of these enforcers? Well, I agree. I've, I've run into one or two of them that are on course and say things that law officers should not be saying. That's one. You know, you've got to a lot of people won't take it. Uh, that if the policeman wants to arrest you, let him arrest you. Let him not say, oh, you will not escape from this one. <laughs> so uh, we've had some language that we shouldn't be, uh, you know, we should just do their job clinically, you know. And then sometimes, especially with uh, all these DAPO drivers, they know themselves. Maybe DAPO driver did not give them the usual thing, so they, they check him up and find an, a way to just punish him and all that. So that there could be miscarriage of justice sometimes. Yeah, so we know all that can happen. Then it now behoves on the government to um, monitor how this thing is done. If LASMA is involved, the management of LASMA should watch their staff. If uh, the task force, the environmental task force that is responsible for this traffic thing, if the officers misbehave, their, their leaders or management should punish them. You know, if it is police officers that, you know, uh, go, against that, um, go, go against the, rule, the law, they should also be punished by their management. I mean, nobody is above the law. Yes. Even law, law enforcement officers are not above the law. Okay. 
Uh, Lagon uh, Shorte, thank you so much uh, for speaking with us. And of course, a quick reminder to Lagosians that ignorance is uh, not an excuse uh, yes, to break the law. Yes, ignorance so, is not an excuse. Uh, no. Thank you for your time and uh, looking you. forward to speaking with you again. Thank you very much. Have a good video. You too, you sir. Too. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're talking security next. The governor of Kaduna State, Nasser El Rufai, and his views with regards how bandits should be treated um, in, uh, of course, um, in a bid to rid the country of uh, these insecurity challenges. We'll be back.